Hi, this is Irene from the University of Calgary. Today we're going to go over lumbar puncture and using ultrasound for static guidance. Um, and in this session, we're going to go over the anatomy using ultrasound for landmarking, estimating the depth and then common pitfalls that you might see using ultrasound to image the spine. Um, knowing the anatomy of the spine is half the battle. Um, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time going over what we're looking at when we do use ultrasound to image the spine. The first thing that we tend to identify um, or look for would be the spinous processes, shown in blue here. And um, other things that you might see on ultrasound would be the transverse processes. And then you have the inferior and the superior facets, shown in green and purple respectively, like there. And then just at the base of the spinous processes are the lamina, um, and shown in kind of light blue over there. In using ultrasound to image the spine, you can use either the linear transducer or the curvilinear transducer. I tend to favor using the curvilinear um, primarily because by the time I need an ultrasound to actually image the spinous processes, it tends to be in patients whose spinous processes are deep and cannot be palpated. Um, and also the curvilinear does tend to give you better imaging ability um, in the deeper structures, but having said that, the linear transducer uh, could be very handy as well. What you're going to do is image the spine in two planes. So here I'll start out um, longitudinally, but uh, you can easily start out transversely as well. But what you want to do is identify the midline of the spine, um, and in particular the spinous processes. And what you might see on ultrasound is an image that looks like this. At the very, very top would be the skin layer, um, and then the hyperechoic elements here would be the sacrum because it looks distinctly different from the spinous processes of L5, L4, and then L3. And you can kind of walk backwards um, and then figure out which, your, which interspace you, you want to target. Um, and again, if you kind of do a linear scan down the midline, you can see the spinous processes elements and then the sacrum um, more distally or lower down on the patient. In a transverse scan, what you're going to do is basically scan up and down the spine again to look for and identify the midline or the patient's midline. And what you're going to look for are the spinous processes at the very top with the shadowing distally to that. And then sacrum does have a, a different appearance as uh, given the shape of the sacr sacrum itself. Um, but what you're looking for is really kind of the spinous processes and kind of line these up in the midline of your transducer. Um, and um, and that, that will kind of tell you where the uh, spinous processes are on your patient. Um, and here's a clip of what that might look like uh, real time as you try to scan up and down the patient's spine. You get the spinous cord spinous processes earlier there and then moving into the sacrum as you scan more distally going back up again, that's kind of uh, going where to the spinous processes are. So using ultrasound to help you landmark where midline is on the patient, you can, like I said, start out transfers of uh, longitudinal, you're going to end up doing both. Um, so let's say you've done that and uh, you've determined where the midline of the patient is, um, you tend to do mark that. And then what I usually do is kind of scan down until I find an area where the hypo echoic shadowing is not as dramatic, and that tells me that I'm likely in between the two spinous processes. And at those sites, I'm going to make a mark, because that's where my needle entry might start. Um, and you give yourself at least a, a few of these areas so that you can you, you ha um, know more readily where the midline of the patient is. In terms of estimating the depth of the needle that you'd have to um, needle entry that you're going to have to put the needle through, there are really two ways of doing that. One is by direct visualization, and secondly, by estimating the depth based on how deep the lemon knot is. So, um, in terms of direct visualization, this is a schematic of where the skin, supraspinous processes, these are the spinous processes here, interspinous um, ligaments over here, and then you have your ligamentum flavum and dura, and then the posterior uh, for t bodies over here. Okay, so what you can see is, again, the skin over here, spinous processes over here. And there's a very faint uh, hyperechoic line, and that's actually where the uh, dura 
analytical flavoring is. These more distal hyperechoic areas are actually the vertebral body, so don't mistake those for where your needle needs to go. Hopefully you won't go in that deep. And then using that, the, the depth of the ligamentum flavum, um, you're going to estimate the depth that your needle is going to have to go. And again, in terms of determining which interspace, you, you walk back through from the sacrum so that you know which area that you want to target. Um, in a transverse plane, what you might see uh, would be the lig ligamentum flavum over here in the posterior vertebral body. Really try to visualize both lines because otherwise it's very easy to mistake this um, for the ligamentum flavum. Or even worse, if you're off midline, you might um, mistake these hyperechoic lines, which are transverse processes or articulate, articulate processes for the ligamentum flavum. So use if you can image the ligamentum flavum in multiple planes and multiple methods and your depth is a lot more reliable than if you only use one of these methods. Again, here is one uh, an image where really only the posterior vertebral body is readily seen and certainly that is not the depth that we're trying to target. Um, and here's a clip of that in real time and again you can see a bit of hyperechoic area and then more distal to that and again this would be the posterior um, for Tibro body, again, not where you want to target. The second method that um, is helpful to use in conjunction to direct visualization would be to estimate the depth based on how deep the lamina um, are. So if you rotate the spine a little bit here, you can see that the lamina are these areas right here. And that would be approximately how deep your needle want to go. So here you can see spinous processes at the top and then as, as I laterally image there you can you can see these scalloping structures those are the lamina so you can use that as a depth of how deep you might want to go now keep in mind because I am imaging at an angle I am overestimating the distance so if I use this depth this is an overestimate um, meaning that I will never really want to stick my needle in deeper than that because this is imaged that's at an angle what are some of the common pitfalls that you need to be aware of? Um, I think one of the common mistakes that I see are people mistaking the laminar for spinous processes. So as you can see, it's actually quite easy to mistake those things, those hyperechoic areas as spinous processes, because they do also, there's a bit of, you know, um, shadowing distal to that. But you, if you sweep through more thoroughly, more carefully, you realize that these spinous processes are actually a lot more superficial as you scan through and you realize that these are actually the spinous processes, not these. Um, so if you mistake that, not only is your midline off-centered now, um, your distances are also going to be very, very much mistaken. So be, take the time to really scan through the structure so you really know what you're looking at. Second common pitfall I alluded to earlier already is that uh, not recognizing where the dura is. Um, having said that, I think this is really you don't, it's not something you, I, I wouldn't generally rely on the depth as absolute anyway. I think it just gives you a guidance and you really shouldn't be taking that as an absolute uh, estimate. Um, take home messages, really know your anatomy. Um, I think ultrasound is most helpful in really just helping you figure out where the midline of your patient is. Do all your scans in two planes and be very cautious in interpreting the images and be aware of these pitfalls. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions at all, please contact me um, and stay tuned for more videos on our website.